okay so good morning all of you can you all hear me can you all hear me and can you see the screen clearly please respond can you see the screen clearly and can you all hear me please respond okay so whoever didn't attend yesterday's class we'll quickly go through the things once because this is the second lecture on availability so we'll quickly go through the first lecture for first four or five minutes so see here uh just a second this is not responding so if you see i told you the maximum useful work that you can take out from a system is called the available energy or you know by the time we know now this available energy is called as exergy just synonyms so the maximum useful work the maximum useful work that can be extracted from a system at given state so if you see this then we have seen since work done by system is the function of all these three parameters we told that this final state should match which should match with the, the uh, should match with the that state of the system which is uh, you know the environmental conditions so the process has to be reversible we have say, seen this then you know exergy is property that depends on both system and surroundings as well so it's a com combined property of system and surroundings and then we get we went for something like this the maximum reversible work that can be obtained from that particular system which is a piston cylinder arrangement simple piston cylinder arrangement at pressure p and temperature t is of this form means this is the maximum useful work because this portion p not dv is expelled because of this atmospheric pressure and this portion of work p not into dv is utilized in restricting the atmosphere correct so this is the maximum useful work that you can get out of this system and we say this is exergy of the system we have seen in yesterday's class and of course because of in act in actual cases we uh, you know we'll be getting irreversible minus w useful which is p not dv means this portion p not dv is irreversibility because we can't even though this integral p dv is the complete work that can be utilized by the system since this p not dv of the small amount is getting expelled because of this atmospheric restriction we consider this as irreversibility and this is the maximum useful work and some of these two is you know uh, the actual reversible work that you could get in this case so and we have seen here w useful is less than or equal to w reversible and in this case w uh, useful is less than w reversible because w reversible work is integral p dv so then we have seen our uh, what's the maximum amount of work that you can get from a heat engine that's operating means with this heat q at a temperature t means if there is some heat at temperature t then we can get maximum work out of this heat if you give this heat to a reversible heat engine and this is the expression that we have seen in yesterday's class so we have seen always that heat addition at higher temperatures could uh, give more advantage for us because the available energy is more in such cases and then we moved on to energy i mean exergy of an incompressible body undergoing a temperature change means if there is an incompressible body like basically some metal blocks or something if they are undergoing a temperature change from an initial temperature t to final temperature t not which is the ambient condition again then during this temperature change this incompressible substance will definitely give some heat to the atmosphere and we have seen the maximum amount of useful work that we can bring out of this del q is equal to delta w useful and we found out the expression for total useful work that the system is capable of doing so mc t minus t not plus mc t not into ln t not by t and this is the case only when the system is completely uh, you know the temperature change is completely from t to t not for example if it's not from t to t not if they give some intermediate temperature then you know we'll apply this formula between two states like this is basically the initial state and the uh, you know this environmental state so if you call this as state 1 and if there is state 2 then we can get a formula when the system is transferring from t to t1 for example next we have seen exergy of a closed system or a control mass system and we attained that the useful work comes out in two forms from this one is the piston boundary work this is delta wb and one is the heat due to the heat ejection that the system is giving and this is equal to delta w of this heat engine so we added up those two quantities and we got the reversible work obtained from the heat engine plus that uh, you know useful work that we obtain from the boundary is equal to this particular expression for the closed system correct so let us see so we have seen exergy of a closed system exergy of a closed system 
at p at pressure p and temperature t for example at pressure p temperature t and volume v temperature t and volume v is this is what we have seen so if you see here this is the useful work that the system is capable of doing when the initial you know pressure temperatures are p and t respectively so this is equal to is xrg for closed system is generally denoted by phi so phi is equal to u plus p not v minus t not s minus u not plus p not v not minus t not s not when system is completely expelled to the dead state correct this is the formula where we stopped yesterday so are you all okay till this point if you are okay with this point then we will move ahead for the next conditions where of course subscript not subscript this not corresponds to dead state properties corresponds to dead state properties correct so please tell me are you all okay till this point if you are okay till this point then we'll proceed for the analysis okay so a system which is initially at pressure p and temperature t and at a given volume is capable of uh, doing this much of useful uh, means we can extract this quantity of useful work from the system which is closed and of course at a condition p t and v initially now if the closed system executes if the closed system executes a process 1 to 2 a process 1 to 2 then change in exergy then change in exergy is phi 2 minus phi 1 means exergy available at state 2 minus exergy available at state 1 is equal to c u2 plus p naught v2 minus t naught s2 minus u naught plus p naught v naught minus t naught s naught this is exergy available at second state minus u1 plus p naught v1 minus t naught s1 minus u naught plus p naught v naught minus t naught s naught so if you see these values this complete terms gets cancelled this is equal to u2 minus u1 plus p naught into v2 minus v1 minus t naught into s2 minus s1 okay so this is equal to u2 plus p naught v2 plus t naught i mean sorry minus t naught s2 minus u1 plus p naught v1 minus t naught s1 so this is the total entropy i mean sorry exergy change when the system a closed system is executing a process from state 1 to state 2 okay so this is the total exergy change uh, means uh, some part of the exergy is missing here because you know this there is some difference between these two phi 1 is not equal to phi 2 of course if the system situation changes like s1 is not equal to s2 v2 is not equal to v1 and u1 is not equal to u2 then there is some difference when the system is executing a process 1 to 2 suppose if state 2 is ambient conditions then you know this value comes again here okay because if you replace second state with dead state then this twos here will turn as knots here and this equation looks same as this equation clear to all of you why if state 2 is the dead state means if you are taking the system till the dead state why the this equation resembles this equation clear to all of you if state 2 is dead state if this is 1 for example if this is equation 1 and if this is equation 2 if state 2 is dead state can you all identify why this equation 2 appears to be equation 1 because exergy of the at the dead state is 0 so phi 2 will be 0 so minus phi 1 is equal to u naught plus p naught v naught minus t naught s naught minus of u1 plus p naught v1 minus t1 i mean t naught s1 so if you remove this minus sign you will be getting this expression again clear to all of you why at that state 
this I means if state two is the dead state in this process, how this equation assembles this equation again? I'm waiting for your responses. Please respond. Are you all understanding the things? Why, if we expand that, if this process one to two is taking from the initial state of the system to the dead state, if this is from initial state to the dead state, then this equation corresponds to this equation again, and this we have already deducted. So see here. So basically, availability function, we define something called availability function for closed, for closed or you can write control mass systems, basically for control mass systems is given by phi is equal to u plus p naught v minus t naught into s and this is the availability term for this you know uh, study flow uh, not study flow sorry uh, closed system basically so this uh, function u plus pi, uh, p naught v minus t naught s is called availability function and generally we denote this with exergy let us uh, write capital x here because generally we denote exergy with capital x so x2 minus x1 let us write here x2 minus x1 because generally this, uh, you know, exergy is denoted by this capital X. So you can write X2 minus X1 is equal to this. Okay. Exergy is generally denoted with this capital letter X. So this is basically the difference of these two functions. And if you take this now, this phi is called availability function U plus P naught V minus T naught S. Clear so far? Now we'll see exergy of a flowing stream of fluid means basically for open systems flowing stream of fluid exergy of a flowing stream of fluid now if you have a control mass system let us see what's the exergy change if the process is undergoing from state 1 to state 2 okay yes availability symbol is x but this is availability function. This is not availability. This is availability function. And the difference of these two functions is actually the, uh, you know, enter uh, exergy there. Okay. So this is control system. Now, see here. Let us suppose this is the control volume that we are interested about. So if you want the exergy of flow system of flowing fluid, of a jet of flowing fluid, this can be modeled as two terms. First thing, if you consider this control mass, I mean this volume itself, then you know, this region is non-flowing. If you are assuming some mass is going in and some mass is coming out, of course they have some weights, m dot in and m dot out. Now, if you consider an equivalent amount of mass is coming in and an equivalent amount of mass is going out, then you know, this portion can be treated as the non-flow portion. Only these two portions can be treated as flow portions. So if you see, we can write this as X of non-flow process plus XRG of fluid. Because there is some fluidic bulk motion of the fluid in these two regions. And we are assuming that this total flow system can be analyzed as some of this non-flow system, which is this control volume space, plus the effect of this inflow and outflow streams. Now I told you well advance that the fluid element here will try to push the succeeding fluid element into the block, which means along with all these energies that this closed system possess, this fluid flowing fluid stream will also possess few more energies, which is kinetic energy plus potential energy plus some flow work, correct? which is P minus P naught into specific volume. Or you can write PV for the time being. Flow work is P into V. We have seen in open system analysis, flow energy, correct, which is flow work required by the fluid to maintain its own flow. So if you consider this term, this fluid which is coming here in a particular orientation, it has some kinetic energy. Let us suppose there is some elevation change also with respect to some datum, then there is this potential term and also to maintain its flow, this has flow work, correct. 
so which means we can model this total control volume or you know this exergy of this complete flowing fluid is equal to exergy of this non flow system plus exergy of this fluid that is entering and coming out so if you see let us enlarge this portion a bit so if you see that day also in first law of thermodynamics i told you if we imagine a imaginary piston here which is lying like this with a shaft something like this and this is the fluid element suppose if you call this element this element as first element and this as second element then i told you the fluid element which is here first element and let us suppose this is second element which is giving into the volume so second element now if you model this second element as a piston then this first element will be doing some work on this second element so that to put this second element into the control volume and to maintain its flow this is the definition of flow energy that we have seen the other day so see here carefully so let us suppose the pressure of this is p and the pressure somewhere here is p not so if you see first of all what's the exergy of the non flow system you have u2 or uh, u minus u not plus p not into v minus v not plus uh, you know what is what's the other thing minus t not into s minus s not this is what you have as the flow energy of this uh, i mean sorry as the exergy of this non flow system which we attained in yesterday's class as the final expression correct u minus u not plus p not into v minus v not minus t not into s minus s not so if this is the exergy of a closed system to this exergy we need to add the exergy of this fluid which is the energy possessed by this fluid is some kinetic energy plus potential energy plus if the specific volume is v at this instant then the total useful work that it's doing is p minus p not into v because we assume that the ambience is at a pressure p not okay so if this is the case so the total exergy of this control volume is equal to exergy of this space which can be treated as a non flow process i mean non flow system plus the flow energy associated with this fluid which is at inlet and at outlet so if you see here if you simplify this expression carefully exergy of let us write small x because uh, we are dealing with specific terms so exergy of flowing fluid exergy of flowing fluid stream is equal to u minus u not plus p not into v minus v not minus t not into s minus s not plus kinetic energies and potential energies are also possessed by this fluid which is having some bulk motion plus zz plus p minus p not into v this is what we have here see correct because this is the total exergy of this closed system plus this is the energy that is associated with the fluid flow so if you see the combination of these two will build up this total control volume that we are taking and the total open system effect that we are taking so this exergy of this flowing fluid stream can be written as this when the system is open of course if you define that fluid is flowing the system is open by default correct okay? so did you all understand till this point we are simply modeling this control volume into a closed system plus the effect of this fluid in and out flows so if you see for getting this inside for example if you are considering at this state along with the uh, closed system effect means along with the internal parts of this fluid it also has some macroscopic motion here because the fluid need to go in so some kinetic term plus some potential term and if this fluid is working on this so as per this analysis if we are talking about exergy of this element at this instant then if the external pressure is p not we have this as the useful total useful work first third so did you all understand how did i attain this expression here so now see here we'll simplify few things u minus u not plus p not v minus p not v not minus t not into s minus s not plus v square by 2 plus gz plus pv minus p not v cut this is what we have so now this p not v and p not v here gets cancelled so this is equal to u let me add this pv here plus pv 
minus u naught and writing this under bracket we will be having plus p naught v naught this is what we have plus or it's a, you can write minus t naught into s minus s naught plus v square by 2 plus gz this is what we have as the total exergy of flowing fluid stream means basically for open system analysis okay so clear this is the formulation that we have and now we can write this formulation always uh, in terms like this h minus h naught because u plus pv is h minus t naught into s minus s naught plus v square by 2 plus gz and this is the case when we are taking uh, i mean like when we are talking about the system has expelled to the you know final dead state if the system is executing if the system is executing if the system is executing a process from state 1 to state 2 from state 1 to state 2 this is equal this implies x2 minus x1 x2 minus x1 is equal to h2 minus h0 minus t0 into s minus s0 plus v2 square by 2 plus z z2 minus this complete term again with h1 h1 minus h0 minus t0 into s1 minus s0 plus v2 v1 square by 2 plus z z2 this is what we have correct so now if you see the exergy change of a flowing fluid stream then see here carefully this h0 and h0 here gets cancelled so we have h2 minus h1 minus t0 into of course this is 2 here we are writing subscripts 2 for this term so now this s0 and this s0 gets cancelled so we have s2 minus s1 plus v2 square minus v1 square by 2 plus g into z2 minus z1 this is what we have as the exergy change for this flowing fluid stream which is undergoing a process 1 to 2 now generally if you assume the inlet velocity and the outlet well i mean at state 1 and state 2 if the velocity and potential effects are negligible means the basically the kinetic and potential effects are negligible between these two states see whenever you are individually looking at fluid they possess definitely and we are not able to neglect them okay because they have some considerable significance here but if the same system is executing between two states then the difference of these two can be uh, you know neglected for time being but when it is solely here v square by 2 it has some value and it has to be retained but when it's going from state 1 to state 2 change then these values are comparable in here then this difference could be small and of course the potential effects so did you all understand why i can neglect here but i can't neglect here here we are talking about the energy at a particular state and here we are talking about difference okay it's like for example if i have 80 minus 79.5 i can neglect this value which is 0 0.5 but when i'm writing this value at state one i have summation of plus 80 in one term i can't neglect 80 there but now i can neglect this difference here at some other state so if you follow this we can neglect this kinetic and potential effects so we can write for a stationary system means basically neglecting this kinetic and potential effects for a stationary system this x2 minus x1 is equal to h2 minus h1 minus t0 into s2 minus s1 and this can be written as h2 minus t0 s2 minus h1 minus t0 s1 and this is equal to exergy of flowing exergy defense of a control volume when it's taking a process 1 to 2 means some part of the energy is getting uh, decreased we'll see what is that uh, decrease and all these things so did you all understand 
so now we have availability function for open systems availability function for open systems for open systems as psi is equal to h minus t not into s okay so which is enthalpy minus t not into the specific entropy at that particular state okay so now x2 minus x1 is equal to psi2 minus psi1 which is basically the exergy change is h2 minus t not s2 minus h1 minus t not s1 this is the exergy change if the system is executing a process 1 to 2 and if you see this h and t not so even though the exergy we are dealing with a control volume it's still dependent on the properties of the system as well as the surroundings because we have the term t not here clear to all of you did you all understand this how we attain this relation please tell me did you all understand see around some 13 hour on live so please respond me did you all understand how did we obtain this relation so for a flowing you can write you can summarize the results for a closed system for a closed system availability function phi is equal to u plus p not v minus t not s for an open system for an open system this availability function psi is equal to h minus t not s you need to understand these two things carefully if you can understand these two relations how we obtain them we can apply them for any formulas i mean any problems that were that they ask in gate examination okay so for a closed system this is the availability function you can write this is the availability function availability function and this is the also the availability function for control mass systems availability function okay so see here we'll go for another things now principle of exergy destruction one of the very important principles so please see here principle of exergy destruction principle of exergy destruction you know entropy is always uh, you know entropy generation is always positive we have seen something called principle of entropy generation and we got s generation is always greater than or equal to zero which means the entropy generation of the universe is always greater than or equal to zero when the process is irreversible this is equal to zero of course and when the process is not irreversible definitely there will be some entropy generation we have seen this in entropy chapter now i will tell you that exergy destruction is greater than zero see here here entropy is getting generated but here entropy is getting destroyed because of some irreversibilities that are lying within the system so we call this as a rate of uh, principle of energy destruction which is x of destruction is greater than or equal to zero now we'll see how this x of destruction is greater than or equal to zero okay see let us consider an isolated system for example or let us consider some universe first of all okay so in this universe let us suppose some process is happening one to two some process is happening a system is executing some process from state one to state two now if this is universe then there won't be any energy interactions and also there won't be any mass interactions correct because you know a isolated universe is an isolated system and isolated system can't exchange either energy or mass with respect to any other uh, surroundings so if you see applying law of conservation of energy applying law of conservation of energy if you apply this if you take this as a system for example if you call this as a system 
isolated system. So see here, E inlet minus E outlet is equal to change in energy of the system, which is in this case E2 minus E1. If process is from 1 to 2, isolated system, we can write universe undergoing a process 1 to 2. means some process 1 to 2 is happening within this universe. So E2 minus E1 and of course for isolated system you can't have any energy inlet this value is 0 and energy outlet this value is also equal to 0. So this implies 0 is equal to E2 minus E1. Okay, This is what you have. Let us call this equation as first equation. Next let us write entropy principle here. Applying entropy balance, entropy balance equation for this system, and applying entropy balance equation for this system, for this system, please write down S yes, inlet minus S yes, at outlet plus entropy that is getting generated is equal to delta S of the system. And of course, this change in system is again S2 minus S1. If process is being from state 1 to state 2. Correct? This is what we have as entropy balance. So entropy in to the system minus entropy out to the system plus whatever is getting generated. This is equal to change in entropy of the system. So this is delta S. Since of course, this system is isolated. No energy and no mass can enter in. So this S in and S out are also zeros. Which means we have S generation is equal to S2 minus S1. So this is equation 2. Now if I write 1 minus T0 into equation 2 where T0 is the ambient conditions. So see here 1 minus T0 into 2. So basically let us suppose this is an isolated system and then we have this. So this implies 1, if you write the left hand side, 0 minus T0 into S generation. So minus T0 into S generation. So this is basically one isolated system. That's what I want to talk about. You can remove the word universe here. If you're not fine, we can write isolated system. Okay. Which is put in some surroundings, for example, something like this. And universe is an isolated system. And you can write system undergoes a process 1 to 2, if possible. Better write like this system undergoing a process 1 to 2 and this is an isolated system. So minus T0 into S generation is equal to next 1 E2 minus E1 minus T0 into S2 minus S1. Cut. Now if the system is isolated, please tell me if the system is isolated, uh, tell me one thing. What is this energy? This is nothing but the internal energy lying within the system. Correct? Because there is no energy interactions or no mass interactions. And this energy interactions are not allowed. Which means either heat or work interactions are not allowed. So therefore this E2 minus E1 is nothing but internal energy of the system. Correct? So this implies minus T0 into S generation is equal to E2 minus E1 minus T0 into S2 minus S1 and if I do one more thing please see here can I write plus P0 into V2 minus V1 because V1 is always equal to V2 because in isolated system there can't be energy interactions which means there can't be any boundary work as well which means the volume remains fixed correct yes or no in an isolated system please tell me in an isolated system where energy and work interaction I mean heat and work interactions are not acceptable the system is not capable of doing any boundary work or consuming some boundary work which means the system uh, boundaries are to be fixed if the system boundaries are to be fixed the, the you know if system boundaries are to be fixed the volume of the system at state 1 and state 2 are same since this expression is 0 we can write here plus P, P into V2 minus V1 we can add here and if you see if system is isolated if system is isolated then this energy E is nothing but internal energy of the system. So you can write U2 minus U1 minus T0 into S2 minus S1 plus P0 into V2 minus V1. 
this is what we can write correct because if system is isolated if system is isolated then energy of the system is nothing but internal energy of the system because there won't be any provision for new energies to come in so if you see minus t naught into s generation is equal to u2 minus or plus p naught v2 minus t naught s2 minus u1 plus p naught uh, you know v1 minus t naught s1 this is what we can have cut yeah v1 is equal to v2 so that term is zero so this implies minus t naught into s generation is equal to now this is availability function at second state and this is availability function at first state so can we write this as x2 minus x1 which is exergy difference between state 1 and state 2 or exergy change between states 1 and 2 states 1 and 2 please tell me can we write this because see here we got this expression basically if this phi is a availability function then this phi 2 minus phi 1 is nothing but x2 minus x1 correct so if you see here let's go back to the things that we are dealing with so here if you see means this minus t naught into s gen is equal to x2 minus x1 this implies please tell me one thing x2 minus x1 x2 minus x1 is look carefully t naught is ambient condition temperature now tell me t naught can be positive or negative t naught is always t naught is always please tell me t naught is ambient condition so t naught is always positive and the entropy generation what about entropy generation entropy generation is also always positive which means this value is always the negative so if x2 minus x1 is negative or equal to zero because there can be a reversible process where this entropy generation can be zero which means x2 minus x1 is always less than or equal to zero which means x2 is always less than or equal to x1 okay. did you all understand this mathematics just a bit of mathematics here this is always either positive or zero because if the process is reversible we know that this entropy generation value is zero so if process is reversible this entropy generation is zero and this x2 minus x1 is equal to zero for a reversible case but if there is some irreversibility that is lying within the system then this s generation or the entropy generation is always positive and since there is a minus sign this total term is negative and this x2 minus x1 is always negative if irreversible and x2 is less than or equal to x1 means if a system if a system executes a process from state 1 to 2 from state 1 to 2 means by some source if the system is executing a process definitely the entropy i mean the exergy will either remain constant or it will decrease it will remain constant in case of a reversible process but it will decrease in case of some irreversibility and we see the entropy is always decreasing for any natural process or general physical process that occurs and we call this as principle of exergy destruction means if something is destroyed then only the value will be less correct means see here ah uh, here maybe here so see here if x2 is less than s1 means some part of this available exergy x1 when the system is at initial state is destroyed correct yes or no so can we write this as x2 is equal to x1 plus x destroyed can we write this see whenever a system is executing a process from 1 to 2 then exergy either decreases or either decreases or remains the same exergy either decreases or remains the same 
Okay, this is what we have seen here. So if there is some decrease in the exergy, means can we say there is some destruction in the useful work that can be obtainable? Yes or no? Can I? Will you all agree with me with this equation? Please tell me. X2 is equal to X1 plus X destroyed. If I write this, will you all agree with me with this equation? So please tell me. Yes or no? Please tell me. All of you. Around some 14, I guess. All on live. So please respond. Yes. So which means if I write this defense X2 minus X1 as X is destroyed from this equation, look at this equation. Let us write this equation again. So this implies minus T0 into S generation is equal to X2 minus X1, which means X1 minus X2 is equal to T0 into S generation. Correct. If x2 minus x1 is t0 into s gen, I think I made a mistake here in mathematics. So please see here. When x2 is less than x1, we need to add here actually. Plus x destroyed is equal to x1. Correct. A little uh, small error with mathematics. If this is less than this, if you want to equate this, you need to add some term on the left hand side. So this is this. Correct. Sorry for this, actually x destroyed has to be on this side because if you want to equate them mathematically, you need to add a quantity here, but not on the right hand side. Small a math mistake. So see here, if you have this expression now, yes, if you have this expression now, this x1 minus x2 is nothing but x g destroyed. And this is equal to t0 into s generation. And this theorem is known with one famous name called Guy Stodola theorem. This is the name of the scientist who worked on this. So if you see G O U Y, okay, this is Stodola theorem. You can write maybe small letters here as well. And this theorem is really a very important theorem because it tells us exergy destruction is proportional to entropy generation because this T0 is a constant because ambient conditions are more or less they are same. So exergy destruction is proportional to entropy generation. If you observe one thing, one beautiful result you can see here, we know entropy generation is a path function. Cut. We have seen in our entropy, entropy chapter. So if entropy generation is a path function, if process is more irreversible, if process is more irreversible, then yes generation will be more. This is what we have seen. Correct? You remember in entropy chapter, we have taken two irreversible process, then we have proven that entropy generation is a path function. So if the irreversibility is more then this entropy generation will be more, we have discussed all these things. You remember this, all these things. Uh, I think in maybe in the last week when we are discussing entropy, we talked about all these things. Correct? Okay. Do you remember this, all of you? Correct? We have talked about this. So if you remember this, now this exergy destruction is proportional to entropy generation. Which means if entropy generation is more, which means the irreversibility in the system is more then the max, uh, exergy destruction will be maximum. Understood? Means if the irreversibility is more within the system, then maximum useful work will get reduced by huge amount. That's what this equation tells us. Yes or no? Did you all understand this or not? Please tell me, did you all understand this much part? The entropy, I mean, sorry, the exergy that is getting distracted is directly proportional to this entropy generation and if this entropy generation is more this exergy destruction is more and it's obvious in a system if you have more irreversibility the maximum useful work you can take out will be very less which means the destruction of the energy will be more so this theorem if you want to state this the exergy destruction within a system
when it is executing a process when it is executing a process is proportional to is proportional to entropy generation of the universe because generally in soundings we don't expect much entropy generations within the systems only will be expecting some entropy generations because of the molecular motion and all so entropy generation of universe and this is the reason why i have taken this as isolated system because i want to write this word universe here okay so since we are taking universe as an isolated system and this s generation is for a process taking place in an isolated system we will write this universe here okay so if you see what do we have x destroyed is equal to t not into s generation of universe and s generation of universe is nothing but equal to change in entropy of universe when a process is executed correct because for isolated system we have seen delta s of universe is equal to s generation of universe here in the basic equation we have seen correct in entropy balance when you applied entropy balance maybe somewhere here yeah here you can see entropy generation of a isolated system is equal to nothing but entropy change of this system and if you consider this as universe then this is what we have so this xrg destruction is always proportional to entropy generation this is what goy stodler theorem tells us clear to all of you okay did you all understand the things what's happening here please respond if you understand if you don't understand also you can respond you can say what's the problem with us okay so this is what we have for the analysis as of now clear so with this knowledge we'll try to work out a few questions and of course this irreversibility this irreversibility is nothing but w max useful minus w actual means if this is the total maximum amount of energy that is available for you but this is the only energy that you are able to take out as useful work then this is nothing but energy destroyed okay because this is the maximum useful work which means the maximum energy that you can utilize of the system but this is the actual energy you are using that as a work which means the difference of these two is the actual energy destroyed within the system so this implies irreversibility is equal to energy destruction is equal to t not into s generation of universe or maybe change in total entropy of universe both are same i just want to show you why this energy destruction is irreversibility here thermodynamics will also be completed by 29th no issues okay i'll take care of that basic thermodynamics i'm not dealing applied okay so please make a note so this is what we have so for a system now you know if the system is executing a process we know how to find this delta s of universe correct we have learned in entropy chapter in entropy chapter we have learned how to find the total entropy change of universe so if you know this t not will be given which means you can calculate the irreversibility that is lying within the process correct and once you know w max useful because we also calculated expressions for w max useful you know in all these classes let me show you okay so here we have seen what is the w max useful you can that system is capable of doing and also we have seen what is the w max useful that this heat at temperature t is capable of doing and also i have told you this incompressible system if it's exchanging heat with some other surroundings and if it's giving some heat to the serviceable heat engine what is the maximum useful work you can get and also you can get what's the maximum energy available with a closed system and open systems so in all the cases so in all the cases we know what's the maximum useful work we can get by different systems and now we know when these systems are executing process we know how to calculate 
we know how to calculate uh, this irreversibility. So you know calculation of this W max useful and calculation of this irreversibility. So we can determine what is the actual work output that you can get out of a system. This is our basic definition that we discussed yesterday. Okay. So all these things are known to us now for open systems, for closed systems. You know how to calculate W max useful. We have seen, we have analysis for that both for closed system as well as open system. Then uh, there is something called irreversibility. You know how to calculate this. And then uh, this is the case. T naught into S generation. Clear to all of you? Okay. Now shall we solve some problems based on this? Clear to all of you? When these two are known, we'll calculate the third quantity. What's the actual work output we can get out of this? So we'll solve some. To calculate irreversibility, T naught into S generation of universe. S generation of universe is nothing but, you see, we have written this, you remember? In entropy chapter. Delta S of universe, which is same as delta S of system plus delta S of surroundings and we solved problems on this. You remember? Now Sai, we have done things like this in entropy chapter. So now if you perform this again, you'll know this as generation of universe. If you do it here, you'll be getting this irreversibility. Okay. So now we'll look at few problems. Okay, so see, this is the first question that is with us. A heat reservoir at 900 Kelvin, a heat reservoir at 900 Kelvin is brought into contact with ambient at 300 Kelvin. So there is one reservoir and the temperature of this reservoir is how much? 900 Kelvin. Now, this is brought into a contact with ambient at 300 Kelvin. Of course, ambient temperature will be something around 27 degrees centigrade in normal situations. In normal situations, so we will calculate T0 is equal to 300 Kelvin. So, now it is given during this period for a short time. Okay, This reservoir which is at high temperature is here for some long time. During this period, 9000 kilojoules of heat is lost by the heat reservoir. Obviously, because of temperature difference, there will be some heat loss to the ambience. Okay. Now, the total loss in availability due to this process. The total loss in availability due to this process. So, see here. Loss in availability. Loss in availability is equal to what is loss in availability? What, what is the meaning of loss in availability? Please tell me. If I'm asking you loss in availability, what does this mean? This is nothing but exergy. This is nothing but exergy destroyed. Correct? Because exergy destruction is nothing but the loss in the available energy that is with us. Yes or no? Did you understand why this loss in availability is nothing but exergy destruction when some heat is flowing? Definitely the available energy will be lost. So this exergy destruction is what they are asking for. Loss in available energy because of this heat transfer. So if you see, I think you are busy in calculating the answers. It's okay, we can calculate. But first of all, try to understand the things. How to apply the concepts we learned to these problems. So exergy destruction is equal to T naught into S generation. Loss in available energy. See, because the reservoir is generally capable of giving infinite amount of energy without this temperature change. Correct? So this temperature 900 won't change because it's clearly mentioned this word reservoir. And thermal reservoirs are the things where finite amounts of heat can get transferred or they can come in but without a change in temperature. So at ambience temperature is 300. So before going for that, let us perform some calculations. 
T naught into S generation of universe is nothing but delta S of the universe. So this is delta S of the system plus delta S of the surroundings. This is what we have. So if you see now T naught into delta S of system. System is losing heat. But this heat loss is at a constant temperature. So you know minus Q by T of the system. Plus now if you talk about surroundings because there is no mass flow because this is a reservoir and we assume that it's to be a solid. Yes loss in availability means exergy destroyed. So that's what we are writing here. So minus Q divided by T of system plus this portion of heat is added to the surroundings. So we have Q by T surroundings and of course the surroundings is also a reservoir because atmosphere is generally a reservoir. It's given here ambience. So ambience is generally a reservoir and let us suppose this 300 Kelvin remains as it is. It's a constant as per assumptions. So if you see now, exergy destroyed is equal to exergy destroyed is equal to T naught into minus Q by T of system plus Q by T of ambience, which is T naught basically. Let us write T naught here. Now, T naught value is 300 Kelvin into minus how much heat is getting transferred from the body? Nine, uh, you know, 9000 kilojoules. Okay. So, 9000 kilojoules of heat is getting out and the system is at 900 Kelvin. Plus, the heat that's lost is same because whatever heat that is lost by this hot block, the same heat is gained by the ambience. So plus 9000 divided by 300. So this cancels this 30 times and this cancels this 10 times. So 30 minus 10 is 20 and 20 into 300 is 6000 kilojoules is the exergy destroyed. Okay. Let us use capital X because we are not writing anything in specific quantities. So let us put capital X here. Okay. Because small x2 minus small x1 is equal to small x destroyed, then definitely capital X2 minus capital X1 is capital X destroyed. Total, you know, destruction in entropy. We can maybe write capital letters here if possible. X destroyed. Okay. Because we are dealing with complete heats rather than dealing with delta Q and all these things. Clear? So did you all understand this question? Why the loss in available energy is 6000 kilojoules? Did all of you understand this? Why the loss in energy is 6,000 yeah, 6, kilojoules is correct answer. Here, loss in availability is nothing but irreversibility, which is also called as exergy destruction from our, you know, our discussion that we had so far. Okay, so clear. So can I go for the next question? Can we go for the next question? All of you? So see here, this is the question. Availability of a system at any state means what's the exergy. So please tell me out of these definitions, which is the definition of availability or available energy? Okay, so please tell me the answer for this question. Yes. D is the correct answer because this word is present here. Useful, obtainable as the system goes to dead state. Correct? The maximum work need not be a useful work. But recall only the, you know, in yesterday's class, if you remember quickly, I'll take you, I'll write again. Availability, the definition I have written for this is, I mean, I think I have defined it as available energy. The maximum useful work the maximum useful work that can be extracted that can be extracted from a system of course for this to be maximum the system should go to dead state when it goes to dead state okay so you need to be careful about this terminologies see this is the previous gate question that was asked in gate 2000. So we have things like this. So please, you need to be make a quick note of this definitions as well. Okay. 
then uh, okay this is a blank then this considering the relationship tds is equal to du plus pdv between the entropy s internal energy u pressure p temperature t and volume v which of the following statements is correct basically this expression tds is equal to du plus pdv Please tell me the answer for this. B, C. See carefully one thing. We have del Q minus is equal to del W plus du. Correct? When the process is reversible, this del Q can be written as TDS, del W is du, I mean sorry. This is del W as it is plus this is du and of course we are assuming reversibleness here also we can write pdv plus du correct this is how i shown you in entropy chapter and i have named this as first tds equation do you remember this did you all remember this this is how we attain this equation in entropy chapter the first tds equation tds is equal to du plus pdv the only thing that we assumed here is to write this del Q as TDS, the process should be reversible. That's it. That's the only thing that we assumed here. Because DS is equal to del Q by T only for reversible process. If it's not reversible, we have plus S generation also. Correct? So, we see this is equivalent to first law for a reversible process. So, this is correct. Now, why option A is not correct? Let me see. Uh, let me tell you. See here. A and D look similar, but actually it applicable only for reversible process. This is not true because entropy change is a point function and you know you can calculate, you can apply this formula even to find entropy between two states of a irreversible process as well because entropy is a point function. So if you want to calculate this S2 minus S1, you can use this formula even for irreversible process. Understood? So this only is wrong here. Because entropy is a point function and I told you if a system goes from state 1 to state 1 to 2 either in this way or in this way I told you entropy changes same. So S2 minus S1 along point A and point B is also same. So which means this formulation can be applied even for irreversible process to calculate this entropy change. Understood? So that's why the presence of this only here is a mistake here and actually option D suits the best. In gate examination, I'm telling you one thing, please see carefully. Suppose if there is a question like this. A, 7, B, 8, C, 9, uh, D for example, 10, something like this. If you add these two, generally the answer is 6.9. But the actual 6.9 is not present here. So we'll go for the most best suitable option. So if you follow this case, if you follow the case with this question, this only is a mistake here because since entropy is a point function, we can even evaluate the entropy changes for irreversible process using this same equation. TDS is equal to du plus PDB. So this, it can be applicable for reversible process, but it's not only applicable for reversible process. Okay, so the correct answer is D. Okay, so did you all understand now why this is D? Did you all understand why this is D? Because this formula can be applied to identify the entropy changes of even irreversible process because this entropy is a point function. Clear to all of you? Did you all understand this or not? Please tell me. Clear? So we'll go for next question. A steel billet, billet is a small block 
of 2000 kg mass is to be cooled from a 1250 kelvin to 450 kelvin the heat released during this process is to be used as source of energy okay the ambient temperature is 303 kelvin and the specific heat of steel is something like this the available energy of the billet see billet is generally a metal block huge metal blocks okay generally you find them in steel plants steel billets and all these things you will be finding there so see here there is one steel billet at a temperature t now this is changing its temperature let us suppose this is t1 then it's changing its temperature from t1 to t2 okay and ambience is at t0 obviously some heat will be present now during this temperature change from t1 to t0 if this heat is given as a source of energy means if this heat that is coming from the steel block is given as a heat to some other substance what's the available energy means what's the maximum useful work you can get out of this billet this is the question correct if you want to get the maximum useful work out of this heat this heat should be given to a reversible heat engine correct then we'll be having since i am writing q here we don't write delta we let w useful and of course this rejects heat to the dead state finally so t naught this is what we have seen and this is an incompressible substance we had analysis for this so if you see this is an incompressible substance because steel generally you know solids are incompressibles so if you understand this much let me show you one expression now which we have already discussed this energy of an incompressible body undergoing temperature change so see carefully when this body is undergoing a temperature change from t to t naught we integrated this from t to t naught correct because we assumed this w delta useful is the total maximum useful energy it's undergoing because if it's going from t to t naught so we have integrated this from t to t naught for this complete expression now in this question that we are discussing see basically in this question that we are discussing if you see carefully the steel billet is going the change only from 1250 to 450 it's not coming to ambient conditions correct ambient is at 303 but the steel billet is coming only from 1250 to 450 kelvin correct yes or no which means this expression we need to integrate from t1 to t2 correct so let us integrate that or else if you integrate that you will be getting t1 minus t0 because when it's a t2 t0 you got t minus t0 so this will be t1 minus t2 plus mc t0 into ln t2 by t1 because this t0 is a constant of this heat engine surrounding ambient conditions correct so instead of putting t2 t0 integration here if you put from t1 to t2 then this expression could have looked like uh, let me add a slide here telling you the same thing so see here if there is an incompressible substance incompressible substance which is undergoing a change in temperature from t1 to t2 and during the course of its temperature difference obviously it rejects some heat and this heat if you give it to a heat engine you will be getting w max useful here and you will be ejecting it to a temperature t0 correct there is some heat ejection now the formula for this w useful is here we got mc t minus t0 so if you go for uh, this thing now initially the temperature is t and final temperature is t0 so mc t minus t0 so if you do here we'll be getting mc t1 minus t2 next here plus mc t0 into plus mc t0 into ln c when the system is going from t to t0 we have t0 by t so if it's going from t1 to t2 you have t2 by t1 so if you take an mc common here w useful is equal to mc into if you take this mc common then you have t1 minus t2 plus t0 into ln t2 by t1 this is the value that you have here as total 
you know maximum useful work output that you can get out of this useful system now instead of going to t2 if it's finally going to t0 this is the expression that is with us cut so did you all understand this now we'll apply this to a problem mc t1 minus t2 plus t0 into ln t2 by t1 so let us apply this so see here it's going from t1 to t2 now when ambience is at t0 so we'll write the things again available energy is equal to is equal to mc t1 minus t2 plus t0 ln t2 by t1 this is what we have so now mass of the steel billet is 2000 kg specific heat 0 0.5 i think around steel first steel it will be around 0 0.5 what did they give and the specific heat of steel is 0 0.5 kJ per kg okay so 0 0.5 into t1 minus t2 so if you see initial temperature is 1250 and final temperature is 450 so 1250 minus 450 plus ambient conditions t0 t0 is at a temperature 303 kelvin so plus 303 into ln t2 by t1 so this is the value you need to find now of course this cancels this thousand times 1000 into 1250 minus 450 is 800 plus 303 into I think you can cancel one zero here and five table cancels this nine times this cancels 25 times so ln 9 by 25 this is in kilojoules I think they are asking in megajoules correct yes options are in megajoules so let us kilojoules this answer is in kilojoules so this is equal to 800 plus 303 into ln 9 by 25 megajoules. Cut. Yeah, this is what we have. So now we'll calculate the values. Cut. We have got everything. So let us calculate the data now. Let us perform this mathematical calculations and let us get the answer. Because if this is in kilojoules divided by 1000 will give you in megajoules. Right? Because mega is 10 power 6. So if you match this 10 cube with this kilojoules, this is the answer in megajoules. So please calculate this value. 800 plus 303 into ln 9 by 25. Let me help you for this value. Okay, so three, see here, 303 into 9 by 25 long. So log of this value is this plus 800. So 490.43. 490.43. Oh, sorry. 490.93 megajoules. Okay, which is in option A, 490, which could be reasonably agreeable here. Okay, so what's the time by now? 11.15, okay. Yeah, 493, 490, that could be a fine value because options are already given. So 490 could be a good uh, thing because other options are so far, 430 and 490 are very apart from each other. Similarly, 10 and 490 and 0.1 and 490 are, you know, very separating so 490 could be a good case so we'll stop here for today we have learned some good important things so before ending today's class i would like to quickly recall the things that we learned today uh, apart from these problems you know let us save this file because tomorrow we need to work out again few things so see here we have started our discussion basically at this point today so we have defined what is the availability function basically this phi is equal to u plus p naught v minus t naught s is the exergy or availability function for a closed system and also we have seen the analysis for open systems like control volume systems and we have seen 
h minus t naught s is the availability function for open system so basically this portion is something that's helpful to us from today's class is it and this is principle of exergy destruction this, then we have seen exergy of a process i mean the exergy of a system in every process will be either less than or equal to zero so we have seen this x2 minus x1 is less than or equal to zero which means you can write here if you want to write you may write a statement here exergy destruction is less than zero for irreversible process is equal to zero for reversible process and finally if you are getting greater than zero then sorry since we are writing uh, less than here this is impossible process correct because exergy destruction is impossible so we can write for impossible process which means the process can't happen and of course it's a positive value for irreversible because there will be always some exergy destruction for irreversible process okay so if there is some irreversibility some exergy gets destroyed if the process is reversible no exergy is getting destroyed so exergy destroyed is equal to zero and finally if you are getting exergy destruction as negative means if, if the process is appearing like some exergy is getting developed within the system then obviously the process is impossible correct okay? so this is what we have and we can write x destruction is always greater than or equal to zero see here it's not generation it's destruction okay so please make a note of this generally in entropy we have entropy generation is greater than or equal to zero but this is destruction here in this case okay so then i think yeah we have seen something called th this expression to calculate irreversibility and we have solved few problems and of course we have few more problems in exergy after dealing that in tomorrow's class i'll start properties of pure substances okay a new chapter so i think that's fine with exergy as far as my knowledge is concerned you can solve all the previous gate questions if you know this much about exergy okay then applying all these basic equations to ideal gas and all these things for which we have questions we'll work out the things okay clear to all of you so can we wind up this session now please tell me is that okay to all of you can we close this session if you don't say anything i'll assume that you all understood and i'll close the session okay if there is something you can ask okay so i'm closing the session thank you all have a nice day